So if you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a while now, you'll know that I love diving into the backstory of Call of Duty games and specifically looking at individual characters and their backstory. And ever since the launch of Modern Warfare 2019, there's been one kind of two characters that haven't really lined up. There's been some holes missing there, and because of that, it left me with a big question as to why it didn't quite add up. Now, obviously from the title of this video and from the thumbnail, you'll know the character that I am talking about is Khalid Al-Assad, a character who is kind of just pinned on to the end of Modern Warfare as a character who would kind of follow up in the post-season, seasons 1, 2, 3, and 4 as we now know. And slowly he is becoming a bigger and bigger part of the story. However, six months ago, I made a video talking about a theory about Khalid Al-Assad and who his true identity actually is. Now here's the thing, since then, it's no longer a theory. This is just fact. We now know who Khalid Al-Assad truly is. But to fully understand this, we first have to go back and discuss what we discussed six months ago. So when I was first sent this, it was in a couple of emails and then it got tweeted at me and I thought it was a bunch of bull, if I'm being completely honest. But the more I looked into this theory, the more validity it actually had. So before you go commenting saying this is a bunch of bull and I made it up, just watch the video because there's a lot that actually supports this. And you'll see what I mean throughout the video and I will say this is still just a theory. I don't think there's quite enough evidence to say that this is for sure, but I just wanted to make a video showing you guys this theory. And really, it all begins with Khalid Al-Assad's name. That's not actually his name. Let me show you. So at the very end of Spec Ops, after completing all of the missions, you get a cutscene. And in this cutscene, they finally refer to the main bad guy who you are going after. Here is what it says. These new killers are calling him the Immortal Lion, or Khaled Al-Assad. So pretty straightforward, right? They say that the bad guy is named Khalid Al-Assad. But if you listen to it again, you can actually figure out that that's not a real name. If you put Khalid Al-Assad into a translator, it doesn't translate right away. However, if you actually separate the words, what it turns into is Khalid means immortal and Al-Assad means the lion. Put it together and you get the code name the immortal lion now as more emphasis that this is a code name recently with the intel that was added into warzone after completing all of the intel you get a transmission from victor zakaev to khalid al-assad where victor calls him the lion not the immortal lion just the lion but as it turns out this is not the only character that has been in the new modern warfare that has been referred to as the lion and to hear this, we actually have to go back to the middle of the campaign where Farah is talking about her brother. Hadir took the high ground for us. My father called Hadir Shabal, his little lion. So Hadir as a child was called by his father, the little lion. And as he grew, he eventually became the immortal lion. And this is of course what began the theory Hadir is actually Khalid al-Assad. And to fully understand the uprising of Khalid al-Assad, we first have to understand the backstory of Hadir. So this is the story of Hadir Karim. The first time that you actually meet Hadir is when Alex is going alongside battle with Farah Karim and the Yurzikstan militia. And at this time they are fighting against two main forces, al Qatala, run by the Wolf, and Roman Barkov's forces, both of which Hadir claims to hate. Now as you fight alongside Hadir, what you realize more and more is where his hatred for Barkov's forces and even al Qatala really come from. Now, Hadir's hatred for Barkov's forces actually began back as a child, when his father was taken out and killed by Roman Barkov's forces, and then the entire village that he lived in was gassed by the soldiers. And then, after trying to escape with his sister, they were taken hostage by Roman Barkov and kept imprisoned for years. And because of this, Hadir was willing to take drastic matters to take out Roman Barkov and his army. Who 
the fuck is this? Sidi, I'm sorry. Man, no, no, see. Marines, I'm a god. Now in this cutscene, Alex and the CIA are going after some of Roman Barkov's gas, but at the same time, some other army is also going after it. And for most of the game, you don't know who this is, until about halfway through, you see Hadir use some of this chlorine gas against his enemies. This is the moment when you start to realize how far Hadir will actually go to get his way and save the Yurzikstan people. And after this, we also see Hadir almost leave the wolf for tribute, and after after this point is when we start to see Hadir almost take over as the leader for al Katala. Now really the only piece of evidence that we have for this is that once you actually track down the Butcher, who is essentially like the right hand man of al Katala, he knows exactly what Hadir's plans are, where he is, and you actually are able to torture that information out of him. Now once Captain Price and Kyle Garrick actually end up tracking down Hadir, you are actually forced to have to give Hadir up as a prisoner to the Russians. Hence his hatred towards the Western world later on, as we're going to get into. So at the very end of the campaign, Hadir's position is he is stuck in a Russian prison or gulag, and we find this out via the tea scene between Captain Price and Kate Laswell. But there's also another piece of information you need to hear in this cutscene. Enjoy the tea, then. Sakaya wants Barkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat. With Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. Lovely family. They're big fans of Hadir's. Well, that would explain why he's still alive. They're gonna get him out. Then give me what I need. So in this scene, they talk about Hadir being in prison and the Zakaevs wanting to get him out so that they can work together. And we didn't really know what happened with this until the cutscene came along for season four. So Victor found a willing partner to fulfill his father's wishes. Al-Assad had an axe to grind against the superpowers. He was free, armed, and terminous. So the big line there is he is free, armed, and dangerous. What does he mean by free? He's out of jail. Just like they promised would happen with Hadir. And on top of that, they also say he has an axe to grind with the superpowers. And as we discussed about that, that has to do with him getting imprisoned because of the Russians wanting to take him over. And on top of that, the Americans and the SAS actually giving him up to the Russians on top of that. All of this information points towards Hadir being cut free from prison by the Zakaevs and now being on the loose as Khalid al-Assad. But there is one big nail in the coffin that actually confirms this, and it's once again that piece of intel that you get in completing Ghost Warzone missions. Upon completing them, you get a transmission that says this. Zakaev's plan is in motion. We thank the Lion for his support. He may return to Yurzikstan. The Lion, of course, being Khalid al-Assad, and what this tells us is that he's originally from Yurzikstan, just like Hadir. So let's put this all together to one final conclusion. So when you put all of this information together, it paints a pretty clear picture. First of all, with the name of the lion both being given to Hadir and Khalid al-Assad together, that is pretty telling. But then on top of that, when Hadir is in prison and then said to want to be released by the Zakaevs to work for them, and then you find out that is the exact backstory behind Khalid al-Assad, the picture starts to come together. And then the final nail in the coffin is when you find out that al-Assad is from yours everything comes together and it's confirmed that Hadir is indeed Khalid al-Assad. So this is something that Infinity Ward has been leaving breadcrumbs for since the very launch of Modern Warfare. Even in the campaign, they were leaving clues and hints that Hadir would eventually become Khalid al-Assad. And it also gives a bunch of backstory to a character that we really didn't have a ton of backstory about. He was just one of the smaller antagonists within Call of Duty 4. So in my 
my opinion, this is a pretty cool thing that they did. But as always, if you enjoyed the video, found it interesting, it's always appreciated if you do hit that like button. Also, if you like what you see here, want to stay up to date on everything Call of Duty, the best way to do so is make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, and we are officially on that road to 1 million subscribers. So if you want to join the channel for that, it's very much appreciated. And as always, let me know what you think about all of this. Maybe you disagree down in the comments below. But as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are